Good afternoon. And welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. As usual, before we begin, is there anybody celebrating a birthday today or this week? Oh, I see a hand way back there. Go ahead. What's that? February 1st. Happy birthday. Anybody else? Is there anybody celebrating an anniversary this week or today? We're asked to hold these intentions for Carol, Carol Bartelme and rehab and so many others, for their families, for healing and strength may be theirs. For Brenda and Kenzie recently in an auto accident and for their continued healing. For those who are in the hospital, especially those with COVID and their families and those anticipating surgery. For Betty Bonneman, Deacon Rich's wife, who had surgery yesterday for a speedy recovery from her surgery. For Darlene Wagner, who died, and for her family. And for Julie and for her family. And Sophie, Mary, Catherine, Shalou, I think, right? Is that how it's pronounced? And today we also welcome Father Jim Leary in the back. And uh, it's going. So thank you, Father Leary, for being here. We hold all these prayers and all these hearts and present them before the Lord today. At this time, I ask you to. Please join us in singing All Are Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Me by name, Father Jim, but a quick, I'm a seminary in Mount Calvary, so, but I've never been to Newton. But what a some wonderful is out, is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Gosh, you must be so to be told, huh? Imagine they came from someplace else. And of course, the beautiful God's creation. Anyway, I'm so honored to be able to be with you here today. Let's pray 
In the name of the Father, the Son, peace be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Great mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may our loving to God in the highest peace to people of good will bless you we adore you we glory for your great God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the heart. peace on earth, peace to people, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the on us, you take away the sin. There you are seated at the right hand. Mercy on us. Glory to God. And on earth, peace on earth, peace. You alone are the whole. Hear it in the glory of God the Father. God, glory to God in the highest on earth. May we we honor you with all of our mind, heart. For this we ask. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord. Whom I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. I 
Do you gird your loins? Stand up and tell them all that I command you. Be not crushed on their For it is I this day who have made you a fortified wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to do the word of the Lord. shall speak of the glory of A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, 
I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous. It is not inflated, it is not rude, it does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly, as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially. Then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain, these three. But the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue saying, today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb. Physician, cure yourself and say, Do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman 
the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Good afternoon. So last week in St. Luke's Gospel, we heard about the beginning of Jesus' ministry, didn't we? About how he went through the region of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, and being praised by all those who heard him. But then, he went home to Nazareth, and he, the hometown boy, he went to the synagogue, and he was handed a Roll a scroll from Isaiah and asked to read from it. So Jesus opens up the scroll and he takes a verse from Isaiah and he reads it. And when he's done, he hands it back and he says something about it. The thing is that something he said was absolutely rejected by those who heard him. Those people who he thought he trusted and knew rejected everything he said. But why? Why would they do that? Maybe it would help to think of it this way. And for that I'm going to need somebody. Which is going to be me. So think of it this way. I grew up in this area, right? I know all of you. All the adults, I grew up here, I played with all the kids. I worked with my dad to learn his trade. I went to church every Sunday with my family, like we all do, right? It's beautiful. But then one day, as if I grow up, I go away for a short while. You hear rumors about me. I'm out there somewhere. I'm doing these kind of marvelous deeds, right? It's just rumors that really don't pay a lot of attention to it, do we? But then I come back. And I come to church here on Sunday. That's right, I love you. <laughs> come to church here on Sunday. And when I come here, I'm asked if I could do one of the readings. I say, sure, no problem. So I go up to the ambo here, right? And I start reading a scripture from Isaiah. And ironically, it's from some of the gospel from last week. Do you remember what it is? I had to look it up too. I'll remind you. Here's what I read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Now after I'm done reading that, I'm sure everybody here is going, wow, that was pretty good. He said it clear, concise, with meaning. That was great. So far so good, right? But then I come from there and I walk up here and I stand right here. And I look at all of you and I say, today that scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. I'm thinking you're looking at me just like you are right now. And you're thinking to yourself, who does he think he is? That's Steve, Daryl's son. What's he talking about? He can't be doing this. And then after a little while, you start getting a little angry, maybe filled with some rage. 
and what I think I'm doing. Because what did I say, right? When I said that, I'm saying I'm the Messiah, right? I'm fulfilling the Old Testament. I am the one who they're talking about. I'm the man. Would that fill you with rage? Yeah, I think it would. And right about that time, I think I'd be looking to make sure that the back doors are really close by. Maybe that's what would help to think of how the gospel went, doesn't it? If we think of it that way, maybe it helps to understand why Jesus was accepted in all those places in Galilee where they were all strangers, and yet he wasn't accepted by his own people, the people who knew him. And on top of that, what does Jesus do? He said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in one's own land. If anything else didn't make him mad, that did. It's no wonder they threw him out of town, right? It's no wonder. But what does it mean for us here? Maybe sometimes we too, when we're so familiar to somebody else, it becomes a struggle, doesn't it? Think about that. Our children. How much times we talk to them as parents and they go, yeah, right, Mom, Dad. And they'll go listen to somebody else they don't even know, right? What about a husband and a wife or a couple who can't even seek advice from each other, but they'll reach out to somebody else? I've been there. What about the gospel? Understanding the gospel and our love of Christianity. Sometimes it's easier to talk to strangers about it than it is our own family and friends, isn't it? So how do we overcome all of that? How do we do that? Well, I think, personally, for me, there was a couple of things in the Gospel of St. Luke that can really help. The first is this. Jesus not only went out and preached, he performed miracles, he drove out demons, spoke in parables. He did whatever it took to help people believe in the message of Christ, of, of the gospel message, didn't he? And second, what did he do? He never, ever gave up. No matter what people said to him or did to him, he never gave up on bringing that message. And how can that help us? Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not very good at performing miracles. And I don't think I can drive out any demons either. But sometimes we need to go out into the world and if something doesn't work to help somebody that we care about and love, we need to try a different way, anything we can to help them. And more importantly, like Jesus, never ever give up. Never. Just keep trying. I'll end with this thought. Jesus wasn't accepted by his friends in Nazareth as the Messiah because they knew him. Sometimes we too won't get accepted by those we're trying to help because they just know us. But the best part was, lucky for us, Jesus never gave up. And we too should never give up. Never. Because someday, someone, somewhere, Somebody we know will come up to us and thank us for never stop trying to help them. Isn't that what being a Christian is all about? I hope so. Amen. Let's join together in our profession of faith.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Virgin Mary, and we may amen. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. May we lift up to our loving God the needs in our hearts. that the church may proclaim the Beatitudes with clarity and live them with fidelity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the power and influential of the world may hear God's word and share their riches and assets. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That God's people may seek justice by working to save the poorest of the poor, the children in the womb, and the elderly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Catholic education at all levels, that teachers and catechists may grow ever stronger in their mission to impart knowledge and faith and to enable our children to be strong witnesses to truth, love, and sanctity of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the sick may find comfort in the lesson of the Beatitudes and that in their suffering and loneliness, they find the Lord's consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For all the faithful departed, for our deceased relatives and friends, for all the intentions in our prayer request book, and in particular this Mass is for peace in our world and in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, thank you for always listening to us and to our needs, which we present to you confidently through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing Love Goes On, page nine.
Let's stand, everyone, and together pray that our sacrifice here will be accepted by our Father. You, Lord, accept the sacrifice at your own hands. For the praise, the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Together now, let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, it is right, just, our duty and salvation to always give thanks to you. You laid the foundation of the world. You arranged the changing of times and seasons, and you formed us in your own image. You set us over the whole creation in all its wonder to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works. So we join the voices of heaven now as we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of our Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, dear Lord. You're the font of all holiness. So make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them. May they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And before he entered into his suffering and his death, we remember. At his last supper, he took bread from the table and thanking you, Father, he broke the bread, then gave it and said to them, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, we also remember our Lord took the chalice, and after he thanked you, Father, offered it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant that will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Now do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And drink of this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. O Father, as we celebrate this memorial of our Lord's death and resurrection, now we offer to you this bread of life and chalice of salvation. All of us thank you for letting us be here to serve you. And humbly we pray, receiving Christ, may all of us be brought together in greater unity by the Holy Spirit. And we pray for the church, Lord, scattered throughout the whole world, bring us together in charity with our Holy Father Francis, along with our own Bishop Jerome. And we pray for our brothers and sisters that have fallen asleep 
in the hope of the resurrection. Lord, bring them to the light of your face. And finally, Lord, have mercy on us too, that one day we'll come to share eternal life with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints. Let us praise you together with them, give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Ah, amen. Taught by divine teaching, then, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, protect all of us. Deliver us from evil as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, glory are yours now. Dear Lord, you promised peace. Look not in our sins here, but our faith. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May our Lord's love and peace then be with each one of you. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Be Steve. Behold the Lamb of God who takes all of our sins away. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul will be healed. Thank you. 
please join us in our communion hymn, Look Beyond, page 10. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, Lord, we pray that through this help to eternal life, the true faith may ever grow stronger. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord is with you. May he love us, bless, and protect us always. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Well, thanks, everyone. I think we got most of everything right, or close to it. Well, I just want to say, Father Dave is a lucky man. But I suppose he's part of how it is such an impressive looking parish. But gee, this is wonderful. And I'm honored to have been able to be 
with you. Thanks again, everyone. Okay. Please join us in the closing hymn, God Has Chosen Me, number 11. It's time.